am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question. Is an Aryan not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the pedo in Washington, it belongs to the poor. No, says the Jew at the ADL, it belongs to Israel. No, says the trannies on YouTube, it belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose, I chose the, the impossible. impossible. I chose the Third Reich. It started when I discovered the Jewish activities in the press, in art, in literature, and the theater. One needed only to look at the posters announcing the hideous productions of the cinema and theater and study the names of the authors who were highly lauded there in order to become permanently adamant on Jewish questions. Here was a pestilence, a moral pestilence, with which the public was being infected. It was worse than the Black Plague of long ago. And in what mighty doses this poison was manufactured and distributed? And is it for this reason that they can be called the chosen people? I began then to investigate carefully the names of all the fabricators of these unclean products in public cultural life. The fact that nine-tenths of all the smutty literature, artistic tripe and theatrical banalities had to be charged to the account of people who formed scarcely one percent of the nation. That fact could not be gainsaid. It was there and had to be admitted. Then I began to examine my favorite world press. The deeper my soundings went, the lesser grew my respect for that press which I formerly admired. The writers were Jews. Its style became still more repellent, and I was forced to reject its ideas as entirely shallow and superficial. To claim that in the presentation of facts and views its attitude was impartial seemed to me to contain more falsehood than truth. And then I set about learning something of the people who wrote and published this mischievous stuff. From the publisher downwards, all of them were Jews. I recalled to mind the names of the public leaders of Marxism, and then I realized that most of them belonged to the chosen race. I was happy at last to know for certain that the Jew is not an Aryan. It would be futile to attempt to discuss the question as to what race or races were the original standard bearers of human culture and were thereby the real founders of all that we understand by the word humanity. It is much simpler to deal with this question insofar as it relates to the present time. Here the answer is simple and clear. Every manifestation of human culture, every product of art, science and technical skill, which we see before our eyes today, is almost exclusively the product of the Aryan creative power. Therefore he represents the archetype of what we understand by the term, man. This very fact fully justifies the conclusion that it was the Aryan alone who founded a superior type of humanity. He is the Prometheus of mankind, from whose shining brow the divine spark of genius has at all times flashed forth. Always kindling anew that fire which, in the form of knowledge, illuminated the dark night by drawing aside the veil of mystery and thus showing man how to rise and become master over all the other beings on the earth. Should he be forced to disappear, a profound darkness will descend on the earth. Human culture will vanish, and the world will become a desert. And this planet will once again follow its orbit through the ether, without any human life on its surface, as it did millions of years ago. <laughs> 